Howdy folks, once again, it's Donnie back here with you. And the reason I'm doing this video about Kali Linux is because some of the Linux forums that I frequent have a lot of Linux beginners in them who keep asking questions about Kali Linux. So they want to know a lot of things about Kali. They want to start off learning Kali Linux before any other Linux distro. So first off though, what is Kali Linux? Well, Kali Linux is a Linux distro, which is based on Debian Linux. And it's set up as a rolling release model, uses the Debian repositories, and it has a lot of pre-installed tools, which are used for penetration testing or ethical hacking, whichever you want to call it. Uh, for purposes of simplicity, just keeping things simple, we'll just refer to it as penetration testing here. But penetration testing or ethical hacking, all it means is that somebody is paying you to break into their networks, into their computer systems, in order to show them where the weaknesses are so that they can get them fixed before the bad guys break into their systems. So with that in mind, we do have several frequently asked questions about Kali. These are the questions that Linux beginners tend to ask about Kali. First off, is it hard to install? Well, no, not really. It just uses a slightly modified Debian installer. So if you can install Debian, you can install Kali. Can I use it as my normal desktop operating system? Well, yeah, you can, but it isn't set up that way by default. When you install it, the first thing you'll need to do is to manually create a normal user account once you get it booted up for the first time, and then set that user account up with pseudo privileges. And the reason for that is that pretty much all of these tools in Kali Linux are meant to be used from the root user account. And so a lot of times if you log in as a normal user and then try to invoke some of these tools from the Kali menu, then they're not going to work. So you need to log out and then log back in as the root user in order to get them to work. So for that reason, one of the changes that the Kali developers made to the Debian installer is that they deleted the part about creating a normal user account. So you don't want to be running as a root user all the time if you're running Kali as a normal desktop operating system. So the first thing that you need to do when you boot it up the first time is to create a normal user account, set it up with pseudo privileges, and then you will need to install the normal desktop applications yourself because they're not there by default. Do I want to use Kali as my main desktop operating system? Well, that depends. If you're a professional penetration tester or ethical hacker, then yeah, it might be handy to have some desktop applications installed on your Kali machine. However, most people, especially Linux beginners, would be better off using a Linux distro that's already set up as a desktop operating system. Will using Kali Linux turn me into a super penetration tester? The answer to that would be no, no, an emphatic no. Oh, did I happen to mention that the answer to that would be no? If you want to become a competent penetration tester or ethical hacker, you need to begin with a rather varied skill set. So, for example, if you're a novice computer user, you want to start with the basics. And the CompTIA certifications are a very good place to begin here. In particular, you want to go for the A+, Network+, and Security+, CompTIA certifications in that order. By studying for these CompTIA certifications, you'll obtain the knowledge about computer hardware, about networking principles and protocols, and basic security. All these skills are necessary for pursuing a career in penetration testing. If you don't know the basic networking principles, about the way the network protocols work, you're not going to understand the tools that are in Kali Linux. If you don't know basic security, 
you're not going to know the things to look for when you use these tools. You also need to become familiar with the most popular operating systems. You will need to know the file system structure, authentication mechanisms, the weaknesses, the strengths of all these different operating systems, lots of stuff that you need to know about these operating systems. And remember, your customers, when you perform penetration testing, you know, you, you're not going to know ahead of time what operating systems they're going to have. So, you know, they could have Windows servers, they could have Linux servers, you know, whatever, right? So yes, definitely know about Windows, both desktop systems and server operating systems. You want to know about Linux, BSD, Unix, and you also need to know about networking equipment, such as Cisco switches and routers. They have their own operating systems that you need to understand, their own command line that you need to understand. You need to understand the security settings for the switches and routers and understand where are their weaknesses, understand where are their strengths. So you see, there's quite a bit that you need to master before you can become an effective penetration tester. It's a lot more than just using a set of tools. So the question that we still need to answer, is Kali Linux good for Linux beginners? My answer would be no. Your best bet would be to start out with a normal Linux distro. Which distro you choose would depend upon your own tastes and your own needs. So there are lots of different desktop environments out there with these Linux distros. So some of them you might like better than others. And then also there's the possibility maybe you want to learn server administration. So that would affect your choices as well. So that's all for now. I thank you for watching. If you like the video, please be sure to hit like and also be sure to subscribe to my channel.